Ranch outside Winnipeg may not seem to be the place to get in condition for a hockey series such as the one against the Soviets, but for Bobby Hull, there was little choice. Out on the farm, getting ready for winter is a conditioning job in itself. And Bobby Hull kept those huge biceps in tone, throwing heavy bales around, chasing cattle, building and repairing fences, and being on his feet from morning till night. He also started skating exercises after work here was done. This summer has also been one of mental strain for the Golden Jet. His farmhouse burned down and that necessitated everyday travel to and from the city. Like all farmers, Hull had difficulties with obtaining and keeping hired help. As he says himself, he is no longer 25 years old. And with his hockey responsibilities compounded by his coaching position with the Winnipeg Jets, there is every likelihood this may be the last summer he will be so occupied with farming. Also contributing to his thoughts was, of course, the upcoming series with the Russians. That was on his mind a lot while chasing those cattle and fixing the fences. His philosophy about playing the Soviets was basic and honest. Know the problem before you try to solve it. And so the time of just thinking about the Russians was over. The hard work, this time for Canada, was about to begin. Bobby Hall, you indicated to us when we were shooting that film on your farm that you were so busy there that you weren't getting into shape just the way you might have wanted to. You'd never know it. Well, I, I think, Tom, that uh, being out in the fresh air uh, as I spend most of my summers and the people saw just a little bit of what we do, it was uh, the weather got a little bit bad towards uh, the end of August and first part of September and couldn't do as much logging the bales around as we, we could. but. You get in good shape out there. You're not uh, sitting around in a house and uh, and getting a fat cat. You're out in the ex in the fresh air and you're exercising. I, I would like to have done just a little bit more running and skating, but uh, I worked out 10 days with our Swedish hockey players back home, and they're they're a great group of guys and great hockey players. And the the World Hockey Association's in for a, a terrific year when they see these guys play. Listen, I'll tell you, a lot of people <laughs> didn't think you were going to do as well. I don't mean you personally, but they thought the legs were going to give out in the third period. They thought you might have even been a little bit tired today. Not so. No, uh, I think we've got a group of guys, Tom, that uh, they're a little bit unique in the hockey world. We have uh, guys like Gordie Howe, uh, who, uh, in my mind, I don't know how any of these uh, people that uh, felt we'd do poorly could ever feel that Gordie Howe could play poorly. Now, we've got other guys like Frank Mahavlich, who is just a fantastic athlete and, and plays like gangbusters all the time. Paul been, Henderson's been through it before, Patty Stapleton, and Jerry Cheevers, uh, J.C. Trombley. You know, you go down the line, and I don't know where these guys got off thinking that we weren't going to have a good team. These are just a fantastic group of athletes, and what, what has really thrilled me is that they're a together team. Uh, we'll go out and we'll go through the end of the rink together, and if we lose it, we'll be losing it together, but I'm afraid we're going to win it together. You're playing a very physical mm -hmm. brand of hockey, but there's a danger of too many penalties, bad penalties, stupid mm -hmm. penalties. Yes, uh, it's the only thing you can't do against this Soviet team. Uh, all you need to do is really, uh, you don't have to run them through the boards. All you have to do is step in front of them because they're so mechanical, they, they move the puck and then they skate past the guy to get it back and the guy just throws it back blindly. If you take the guy that passes the puck, just run into him, interfere with him so he can't get to a certain point, they'll throw the puck there blindly and it'll go on our stick. But you can't take foolish penalties against them as the people have seen. A lot of people are surprised you're doing so well. Are you? No, I'm not, uh, not a bit surprised. I was, uh, I was really uptight that first game and felt that uh, here's a fantastic group of athletes and we're going to have our work cut out for us, and we do. But uh, I think we've got a great group in that other room there, too. Good. Thank you very much, Bobby Hall. Now let's check on some of the highlights. We go upstairs to Don Chevrier and Howie Meeker. Thank you, Tom. Well, Howie, uh, that was a great period for Team Canada. Not perhaps the bristling, exciting period we saw in Quebec City, but an effective one nonetheless for the team. Well, I think it was exciting. Too. Something very special for Canadian hockey fans and the WHA. The Quebec Nordiques, Toronto Toros, my own Winnipeg Jets, the Edmonton Oilers, and the Vancouver Blazers are all in one new division, the Canadian division. That means we'll play more games in Canada against our Canadian competition. Add that kind of fan interest to what you'll see from the rest of the WHA, where high round draft picks and prized European and North American additions have made all teams stronger, and you'll know why season tickets are really moving. There are still some good season tickets available, but you'll have to act quickly if you want to be part of a great league, not only this year, but for years to come. Call the team ticket office in your area right now. There'll be someone there to answer your questions and deal with your requests. 
join the WHA. You'll have a lot of fun. See exciting hockey, and you'll find it's something the entire family can get involved in. I mean, we've already proven that, haven't we, Zico? <laughs> All right, yeah, Bob. <laughs> Announcing the amazing new Patty Stacker, a fantastic kitchen convenience from KTEL. The Patty Stacker makes and stacks up to a dozen hamburger patties quickly and easily. Simply put one of the reusable plastic discs in the tube. Now, put your fresh ground beef on the disc. Drop in another disc. Then, using the plunger, press the meat into a uniform patty. Imagine, no more mess, no more fuss. Your hands need never touch the meat. Repeat this until the tube is filled. By simply reversing the tube, the patties can be easily removed. Now they are ready to be cooked, placed in the refrigerator or in the freezer. Perfect for unexpected guests or quick snacks. For a picnic or cookout, leave them right in the tube. Patty Stacker is an amazing kitchen tool. It's convenient, easy to clean, and effective. Get the all-new Patty Stacker, $4.99 from KTEL. Available at Eaton's in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, and the Bay, Woodbirds, and Simpson Sears. Toba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, and the Bay, Woodbirds, and Simpson Sears. And at Wilco, Woolworth, Dellers, McLeod Stores, and Link Hardware. You know, the more you travel with this series, the more you realize that the story of the Howe family is the story in sport in the 70s. Not just at Houston, but the reunion with Team Canada 74. And here is Bill Good Jr. to tell you that story. <laughs> The greatest of them all, yes, the greatest of them all. You can have your choice of all the rest. If you're a fan, you've got the very best. Gordy, uh, how's your recollection of a conversation you had a number of years ago at the CBC about some of your future goals and your career then appear to be coming to an end? Do you recall what you said? Uh, yeah, well, I can't recall it right to the word, but I do know that... Uh, contemplating retirement I think at the time and I said I was giving up quite a bit the uh, what would supposedly be a fulfillment of a dream with me to play with the two kids and then uh, at that time I didn't realize it but uh, Team Canada I might have had a shot of playing for my country against the Russians and and I had to give that up too but I was uh, the fun of the game had left me completely fishing was wonderful because that's what we were doing but at that particular time I I was doing what I thought was best for myself and for the fans, but uh, all of a sudden I got rejuvenated because they picked, Houston picked up the two boys who, I think I was doing a little bit of bragging about them, just about them too. So everything just was absolutely letter perfect last year. And then I was gonna retire this year again. And uh, I got word that uh, there would be a team cannon, uh, World Hockey would be associated with it. And also uh, the owner of the Arrows would like me to participate with maybe for another year with the boys to keep the fans coming in so they could fulfill the uh, new arena which is being built in Houston. You've never before been to Europe, have you? No, as far across the deep water I've been as I've, uh, I took the two boys, Marty and Mark, and uh, we went to Ecuador to do some deep sea fishing with a bunch of friends of ours, and that's about as far as I've been. You know, with all the hockey you've played and all the places you've been, the honors you won, is it difficult for Gordy Howe to be really excited about the series. I mean, deep down inside, how do you feel about it? Oh, I was excited, uh, more thrilled than any, uh, excited. I, I am a man who shows very little emotion. And uh, one of those days was right here in the city of Saskatoon when down the uh, west end of the rink, there was a platform and mom and dad and the rest of the family sat up there and they uh, were presenting Gordy Howe with a really, truly great day. And uh, I didn't say much or do much but I felt emotionally inside, and I feel the same way, and here comes the old fellow right now. My dad's just coming in the building. There's some stories about your dad, and maybe I'll ask him about that, about the day you signed. Are you aware of the story? Well, I said something about hanging a door. <laughs> he said you weren't too swift. No, I wasn't too swift. I didn't really know what the heck was going on, to tell you the truth, because I had two, uh, two outfits were after me, the uh, New York Rangers and the Red Wings at that time. I want to ask Gordy's dad about uh, that story of uh, the actual day that Gordy signed his first contract with Detroit. Like you said at the time, Gordy wasn't too swift about something. Oh, he's pretty slow to sign. <laughs> he took his time, and you had some work to do. I had to hang out the kitchen door. And what took all the time? Well, I said, if you want to play hockey, this is your chance. If you don't, I said, say so. I got to hang a door. Call my name at the time. <laughs> 
Marty Howe is the older of the two boys and probably has faced the greatest pressure from being a Howe. He distinguished himself as a solid defenseman with the Toronto Marlboros, but doesn't really stand out on the ice. People perhaps forget he's only 20 and still has plenty of polish to come. Mark, on the other hand, showed his stylish play at an early age, and by the time he was 16, experienced international competition when he was the youngest player ever to see action in the Olympics, when he was a member of the United States team in Sapporo. What do you call uh, number nine uh, on the ice? Gordy and Dad off, or do you get confused sometimes, or what happens? Uh, well, playing on his line, I really don't have to yell that much. He's got eyes all over his head, I think, and uh, anywhere you are, he can get a pass to you, but that's why you have to call him Gord or Dad, or most of the time I'll call him Gordy on the ice. Uh-huh. Is he an easy guy to work with? Oh, definitely. You just give him the puck and let him go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> makes it all easy. He's not too hard on YouTube is what I mean. Oh, no, no. Not too yeah. No, he's, he's not like that at all. He, uh, he'll mention something if he sees a mistake, you know? He won't uh, criticize you. He'll, he'll tell you what to do instead, sort of thing. Well, hockey's been a family affair for the Howes for generations, and for Colleen Howe, it's been a rewarding experience. He often said when someone has asked him uh, what his um, greatest achievement would, would possibly be someday, and he said, well, he'd like to leave his children with a million dollars each. But I don't think that either of us really strive to have this. I think we really um, want to be somewhere when he's through, uh, somewhere that, that he will be happy and in a, in a position that will give him a challenge and uh, because he certainly had it in hockey all of his life and I think he's going to need this because it's going to be kind of a sad day I think for all of us when he retires and uh, uh, it shouldn't be in too, um, too really too long a time. Cody Howe is the greatest of them all The greatest of them all Yes, the greatest of them all you can have your choice of all the rest. If you're a house fan, you've got the very best. What a story, what a family. I sat with Gilles Gerton during that first period, and when Gordy scored,